Hey there, it's Richard Geller. I want to welcome you to our next call. How you doing, Alan? I'm doing great. Thanks. Thanks, Richard. We uh, we finally we finished Casa Bonita. I can't wait to share the pictures with everyone today. Well, these pictures look really nice, but wait till you see how it came out. And what we're going to do today, let's go back. Uh, this is, of course, what we've been talking about all this time. And let's go to the, let's go right away to where we are in the plan and uh, what we're doing. And, and uh, so what we, uh, what we're doing here is we've talked about the pre-purchase, finding these properties, getting the money together, partners, deals with partners, money, people, banks. We talked about closing and all the ins and outs of closing, which is just fantastic. We've already had a lot of people thank us, Alan. We've had a lot of people awesome. using this stuff and, and actually put it in action, which is so exciting. Um, you know, this is there's no never been a course that I've ever seen like this where we got so many people actually applying this and and uh so we had a lot of questions in that we're using so the next thing we're going to be doing is today is talking about the rehab the fix-up part and then we'll be talking about leasing up and then we'll talk about managing the property and maybe even managing other people's properties so that's what we're going to do to get right into that so with that um let's um Let's get started here. Uh, you've you've done a, an amazing job with Casabini, and I can't wait to show everybody on the call what it is that you've done because it's just spectacular. But the amazing you know, Richard thing... would oh, go ahead. I was going to say the rehab. You know, since we're talking about when people hear rehab and apartment complexes, they really they don't they shy away. They don't like it. And I hope today my goal is to you know. The rehab can be easy. It could be simple if you stay organized. And we're going to go through the steps today about the rehab. But the most important thing about the rehab and the apartment business, you can realize so much wealth. I mean, you're capturing all this equity. You're buying something that nobody wanted, maybe because it was distressed and no one did the proper job fixing it. And we're going to take you through the steps today on how to properly fix, spend, budget your rehab process so when you're done, Maybe your building, maybe your apartment complex is worth a quarter of a million, a half a million, a million, two million dollars more than it was 90 days, you know, after you bought it. Um, and I've been in that situation. I've realized quarter million dollar, half a million, two million dollar pops. Imagine buying something for for a million and you find that it's worth three million because you spent one hundred fifty thousand dollars fixing it and painting it. Um, those are some of the things we're going to talk about today. So let's look at that real quick. Let's just say we're buying a property and the average rent is $700 a unit and we're done rehabbing okay. the property. Uh, maybe the area that that type of a uh, property, let's just say we raise it to $800 a unit, the rents over time. How much okay. have we increased the value of that property? You know, let's keep it really simple. Let's just say there's 40 units. Okay. And that's a modest increase of $100 a month. So it's $100 a month times 40 units. So that's $4,000 a month additional income. We'll give it a 10 cap. And a 10 cap. So so basically that would be $48,000 a year. Right. And that would be a $480,000. You know, it, 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 it it's that easy, especially if you have a plan. I mean, that is that is very possible. I do that a lot. Um, you're going to go in there. You're going to do a rehab. You have the right, in my opinion, because you did some work to raise the prices. Um, you'll find that a lot of people living in apartment complexes that have been there for a long time, um, their rent really was never raised. Maybe the um, prior owner was nervous about raising rents or he wasn't even there or it was just distressed. So you fix the property. You make the tenants happy. They'll be more than happy to pay $100 more because they know if they move, it's going to cost a fortune to move, and they'll probably be paying the same amount of rent anyway. So you're talking about an increase of almost a half a million dollars um, in your pocket or on your balance sheet. This is the way to true wealth. It's really amazing because so so let's look at that and today how much that's going to cost us. Is there an okay. amount that you spend per unit that would be uh, you know uh, something we could use for this example for example you know? Well, I'll tell you what. So here's what we did with with Casa Bonita. Um, so we paid $950,000 for the property and I want to say we came up with a hundred 
$100,000 budget. So $100,000 budget, help me out with the math, um, cost of unit is 59 units. Okay. Uh, my calculator. Okay, so <laughs> it's 100000 divided by 59. So that's uh, $1,700 a unit. Um, Roughly. Okay, so yeah, we didn't have to, with Casa Benita, we didn't have to go in there and rehab every single unit. Um, when we bought it, I think maybe it had around, um, just we'll say 10 empty units, which is a great amount. Um, of, uh, 10 units is how I like to do my rehabs. Let's just say Casa Benita was empty and 59 units. I wouldn't go in there and start rehabbing all 59 units at the same time. I like to chunk it down into small pieces. 10 at a time works great because I have found if you do more than 10 at a time, your budgets will run over or you'll get confused. If you can just find two, three, four contractors that will work on 10 at a time and you can dangle the, you know, it's like the carrot and the stick. You're dangling the carrot in front of the contractor. You're saying, look, when you're done, when you do everything you're supposed to do, when we uh, pass inspection, I'll give you the next 10, and then I'll give you the next 10. So the that makes the contractor very happy, and it makes him want to stay where he is. So the 10 units um, at $1,700 a unit, is um, for me, that actually worked out very well. So I can tell you that we like to spend a lot of money on the flooring. So maybe I'll, been, um, I'll call yeah. up those photos, the pictures we have. Sure, okay. we talk about that. Thanks. So... Flooring, there's this, there's this um, it's called plank flooring, and it comes in, Richard, three-foot strips. And it almost looks like a real wood floor because they lay it like a wood floor. And it's you can buy this now for like 75 cents to a dollar a square foot, and it's very inexpensive to put down. So we like to get in there. We want to get out of the carpet business. I just hate carpet. Yeah, it doesn't last very long. It doesn't turn very well, and it seems like every other tenant or every other year I have to replace and spend a lot of money on it. I know some people like to keep carpet in the bedrooms. I choose not to. I, I use this plank flooring across the board, or I should say across the floor, and I can do that for around five hundred dollars um, a unit. So I spend around five hundred dollars on the floor. And then um, I just, what can I say? We just, we just, we paint the walls um, and then we epoxy the tile so we don't have to rip out the tile. And that's a special paint that sticks to the tiling. And I can easily get in there for around, let's just say, 1500 to $2,000 a unit and make it look absolutely incredible okay so you got about five hundred dollars yeah. for a floor we're getting rid of yeah. carpet and we're putting in basically it's it's a fake wood tile but it's durable right okay yes and then we're going to do the walls you're going to epoxy the walls no no Sorry. um we're going to epoxy the tile oh okay now this is um this is a paint that it's sprayed on by a professional um they get in there it's kind of cool looking they, they put their suits on and they're um, their breathing device on it's, it's very potent it looks wonderful it's, i've seen it it's just a miracle yeah. really it's the new it's you know just, it's you know it saves people thousands and uh, really tens of thousands of dollars on, on the rehab um per unit because you don't have to get in there and rip out all the tile most likely the tile's outdated most yeah. likely it's from the 70s or, or maybe even the 60s and you can just spray this epoxy um and it looks brand new now look it, it does it does scrape away but it seems to last a good year or two and when you repair this stuff you don't actually have to go in there with the same company that sprayed it um, you can literally you can buy spray cans at um, Home Depot and you can repair it yourself nice so yeah um, little little secret there to, to keep your your operation costs down okay you can repair your own epoxy and you can you can spray your kitchen area you can spray your tub. You can spray the backsplash of of the kitchen area and the the shower backsplash for I'd say less than two hundred dollars. Wow! So I'll do that for around two hundred dollars, and um, I can paint a unit for around 
$200 in labor. And I can also, um, with discounts, we've talked about it, um, I want you to buy five gallon drums and you get a massive discount. I can get in there and spend around uh, maybe three five gallon drums for less than, we'll say, $200 there. So we got 400, 900, 1100. And I'm not sure where, you know, some people will need to go out and buy refrigerators and ovens. Let me let everybody in on a secret. You don't have to call up Sears and buy brand new stuff. There's lots and lots of scratch and dent appliance shops. You can get used refrigerators for $150. You can get used ovens for less than $150. Um, it's really up to the individual. I like to get used stuff. Let's not forget who's going to be living there. You're not creating an A, you know, you're not creating a, an A class project. Um, yeah. You're, we're, we're just supplying affordable housing and making the best possible product. The use is That's great how I do it. It, it. it doesn't lose value. You know, you buy it for right. not going to appreciate and it's just as good. Right. So, you know, I, I think what I just said was less than $2,000. Now, that yeah. would be a complete turn. Not every single unit is going to need a brand new, you know, a brand new oven or a brand new refrigerator. Or you're not going to necessarily have to go in there and knock out all the, all the new flooring. You know, there might be stuff that you want to keep that's been left behind that's in. A lot of, a lot of people use this stick tile, too. Um, it's very inexpensive. It's like $0.25 cents a stick tile. Literally. They pulled the decal off of the back of the tile, Richard, and um, they have their uh, stick tile, and it just goes right down to the, 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 the floor. I think it looks a little cheap, but um, I'd say half of my market here in Houston, Texas uses this stick tile. What are you using instead at the $500 level? Well, I like to, I like to use that three-foot plank. I like to give it that wood finish floor. So I go, I go the extra mile and, and invest a little more. But depending on where you are on your budget, sometimes you can only do what your budget says or what your market says. Maybe seventy-five cents to a dollar a square foot for this three-foot plank might not be in your budget, and twenty-five cents to fifty cents is. People don't realize it, but when you're talking about square footage, um, sometimes you can have thousands of square feet on a property. So when you can save. 25 to 50 percent of the price it's a lot of money well so I, I, of, you know, I want to say the, yeah. the amount you're talking about here is a fraction of what most of the uh people are spending and what these uh, brokers are suggesting actually it's so much lower oh uh, you know absolutely and just to, to share with you some more experiences how we save money um we used to use flooring companies to lay this for us because it was still very affordable and our listeners can actually call the flooring company um, and get a bulk discount. But we just figured out how to buy this stuff on our own from HD Supply, which we're going to talk about today, or even Home Depot, and make sure you get some kind of corporate discount when you do that. Uh, and then we taught our on-site people. We actually found out that they knew how to do it. They can just lay it. Our, you know, our on-site people can lay it. And then our on-site people are making anywhere from 10 to $15 an hour. Um, so by the time you're done, you're putting this floor down for four or $500 and you're, and you're completely done. If you pay a professional company to do it, you, who knows? You know, maybe you're going to pay $750 to $1,000. It's, you know, like it's up to our listeners. But it's really easy to figure out. I'm, I'm, your maintenance person should know how to lay a floor or you hired the wrong maintenance person. That's all there is to it. Yeah. So you can do this stuff in-house. The more stuff you do in-house – the more money you're going to make. Yeah, I will say right sometimes away. there are people, there are individuals out there that just specialize in working for landlords that are really inexpensive and know how to do this. So it's, you know, you don't necessarily, yeah. Absolutely. And, and my company actually does that for other landlords. We yeah. specialize, you know, we keep our prices cheaper than what the professionals charge and we just do a 20% markup and everybody's happy. Yeah, so someone you could find someone like your company, and and uh, yes. you don't want it, and that would be fine too. But you don't. Yes. If you go to these contractors and have them do it, you could spend ten grand for what you said on a unit. I know, I've seen it. I see it all the time when I look at apartment buildings. Right. So it's very important for our listeners to ask the questions. Um, don't be shy. Ask the questions. Get the best possible price, and understand what you're talking about. And what we're talking about here is the flooring makes the place pop. 
I mean, mm -hmm. the, 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 the new parents walk into the apartment unit and they're just like, wow, we never thought we can have these. They, some people think that they were wood floors, but because the vinyl plank is so beautiful and it looks so real that it actually looks real. I mean, I mean, dentist office are using this now. I know. Um, places, I know. You know, when you go into retail and shopping malls, they're using it now. So we've seen this change of technology, which is just gives us such a huge advantage because it allows us to buy these 1970, 1980 properties and put down this very inexpensive flooring, and it looks like brand new wood hard floors. So of course we're driving rent prices here. We want to get the most rent we can get. And when you do something, when you add value like that to the apartment unit, you'll get more rent. Your place will be worth more money. You'll have more net operating income, your NOI. And, you know, if you're in a 10 cap, we get to multiply that by 10. And um, you're going to make a lot of money. Okay, now here's a question. Okay. I've had things where I had to tear out floorboards and all that. And then one thing leads to another. Oh, there's mildew. Oh, we got to replace the drywall. Blah, 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 blah. And that's what I see a right. lot of right now. How do you decide what not to do? Okay, well, listen, if, if the floor is really wavy and you, have a, you clearly have a foundation problem, then you, you have to fix that problem first. You just can't lay this kind of vinyl flooring on, on a floor that's really crooked. If, if you have rotten wood under there, um, you're going to have to fix that rotten wood. Quite frankly, I like to lay these floors down on, 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 on like a cement floor. You know? we, don't, we don't really lay this kind of tile down on wood. So there are some areas where you'll have to use carpeting if that's the case. But um, the majority of the apartment complexes that I go into, they have a strong foundation. And if the, if the floor is wavy and it's some kind of concrete underneath, well, then what we do, we call it floating. We can float um, a small amount of an adhesive, like a concrete, to kind of balance out the floor. And it's, it's a very inexpensive process. And again, you're adding value. You're fixing somebody else's problem. That's why you got a great deal in the first place. So the vinyl plank, the flooring we're talking about, works in, I'd say, 95% of the apartment units you're going to see. If you have rotten wood, well, I wouldn't lay this on rotten wood. You do have to fix the rotten wood mm -hmm. and maybe use carpet. You know, I, right. find, I find that when I'm in that situation, um, those are like the bedroom areas once in a while of apartments. And... People like carpet in their bedrooms. Again, I try to get away from it. So um, I use the plank flooring when I can. It saves me a lot of money, especially on the turns, because when somebody moves out 6, 12, 18, 24 months later, literally, mm -hmm. I can spray it down like a storage bin, Richard, um, with water and clean it, and that's it. And if something scrapes, if somebody scrapes a, a, part, a part of the floor, well, back in the day, we used to have to rip up the whole entire floor. <laughs> now, it, it, this is like a, it's like an infomercial. We can just pull up a three-foot three plank, uh, a, a one piece of vinyl, and replace it with a brand-new piece of vinyl, and the whole entire floor looks brand-new for a $2 repair. Oh, that's fabulous. And um, the, you wait, and I just, this is going to save, this probably saves um, our uh, students the most serious change because again you get this pressure from brokers and they you right. know like they'll do these pro formas and well you'll spend ten thousand or twelve thousand units. You know, I see them all the time because we look when we look at buildings. And um, if you can do it for a couple thousand a unit like this, um, it's just right. an amazing economic advantage. So I want everyone to keep in mind, I want you to I want you to rehab your units with the understanding that they're gonna move out. They're it's gonna turn and you're gonna have to repair it. So do the rehab right. Don't be stingy on it. Buy the right materials that are going to last a long time. And I just gave you, you know, the golden nugget. Buy the vinyl plank floor. Do it right. It's going to look beautiful. It's going to close the deal. You know, it's when it's going to close the deal when the family walks into the apartment unit and asks themselves the question: Do I want to rent this unit? Okay, great. Vinyl plank and uh, not to do any, not to get into things where you're doing lots of other things. You don't fix windows. You don't redo windows, for example. Um, no, I try not to. Matter of fact, um, I, I'd rather not go into that. I'd, I'd rather not buy that complex. Don't fix windows because what, there's, what, what, there's so many new rules. 
Yeah. So when you do something like that, you're going to be not, you may lose this grandfathered in status and you have all this, right. all the ADA, all this garbage. Right. That you, uh, right. Right. You just have no idea. Okay. Next thing that you learned, which is really amazing, was that you could actually get an interior designer to come up with your, what you're going to do. And I always thought, you know, these guys are real expensive, but you really have opened my eyes about this. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know about you. I thought I had good taste. But every time I finish uh, the first few apartment complexes, um, clearly, I don't know how I came up with the color schemes that I did. Um, so somebody <laughs> turned me on to an interior designer. I always thought I couldn't afford them. Um, but um, it turns out for less than $500, um, you can hire an interior designer. Um, the one we hire, she comes out to the property. She spends a few hours on the property. She interviews a few people. She gets the feeling, she, you know, you, you let them do their thing, and um, they come up with a great plan. Um, I don't, do you have that plan? Do you want to look at it quickly? Yeah, let's do that. Share yeah. What, um, so this is, I hired, just this is for real, everybody. I hired an interior designer. She came out to Casa Bonita. I paid her around $500, and Casa Bonita was, I, I can't remember, I think it was built in the 1960s, mm -hmm. and um, it was a distressed sale, and I um, you know, it's kind of in a seaside town. It is in a seaside town. Mm -hmm. um, but so we decided, she, she interviewed me. The plan was we weren't going to create this um, really kind of uh, pastel, cream look like every other apartment complex. We were going to keep this complex. Um, we wanted to keep it kind of classy and, and cute and create a community feeling. So what you're looking at is her notes. Um, yeah, and, and this is um, just to show well, a little, might as well. Oh, this okay, is, so b before and afters. Go ahead, Richard. Yeah, I mean, it's just, um, it's interesting. There's something about it that uh, just looks better here. It just, and yet, yeah, you know, it's just something it's more. Very subtle, right? She did, yes. she did very subtle things. Like, look, for example, notice the, the terracotta tiling in the front and the left-hand side. Um, it's green. And I would have never thought about painting, no, up top to the left, above the, the satellite dish. I hate satellite dishes, everybody. Um, I now charge a $500 deposit to def uh, defer people from doing it. Um, so I never thought about painting it green. I mean, what it was was probably terracotta tiling um, that was 30, 40 years old that looked outdated and too expensive to replace or even expensive to take down. So it was that, let's see if we can find a picture of that. No, no, I was trying um, to find it. I don't oh, think I could. No, okay. Um, so anyway, she comes up with the idea to paint in green, you know, like a China green. And, uh, like a oh, here it is. You can kind of see it here. As the, the, it was the, Thank you. There yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah. Now, so, you know, listen, I like that. My house that I live in has terracotta tile, uh, that color, but... In the front of the complex, it looked awful. It was just, it was weather worn. So we needed to do something. And so she comes up with the idea to um, paint that green. And I can't, I'm not sure if you can tell, but on the right hand side of the picture here, for, for very little money, Richard, you don't know, I'm going to point this out to everybody. We put shutters on the windows, the green shutters. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was, I, 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 it was probably less than $20 a shutter. Now, it really makes, it pulls it all together. You're looking at the front. See, look at this. There was no shutters on those windows. Um, and what you had was just like this ugly concrete looking. Okay, so um, now that you put it out, let me see if I can yeah. see. There's the shutter. Let's see if we okay. can see. Yeah, I see exactly what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we wow. didn't go through the whole entire complex. Let me let her share a secret with everybody. We didn't go through the whole entire complex and put shutters on. We could have, but we wanted to stay on budget, which we're going to go into soon. But, you know, when it comes to the, one of the big differences between apartment complexes, Richard, and single family houses, single family houses, you really got to work on the inside of the unit. People just, they want to see it and they want to, they want to see the inside of the house. But when it okay. comes to apartment buildings, right. when it comes to apartment buildings, the exterior is almost more important than the interior. The the the, uh, the outside, the exterior is more almost more important because they judge it that way more than they do a house that you're going to be. They won't stop. 
they won't stop, right? They, it's, it's drive-by traffic. They'll just keep going. So um, mm. we tend to want to spend more on the exterior. If you think about it, you walk into a beautiful Class A building. Um, it looks incredible from the outside, incredible fountains and you know, whatever they do. But when you get inside, they're going to use the same plank flooring, the vinyl flooring that I'm sharing with everybody, and we're going to use the same colors. So it's really hard to differentiate differentiate yourself in the inside, but in the ex on the outside you can make you know you can make people look beautiful, and that's what we're trying to do here. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a really amazing tip. So we won't necessarily go into all this, but that's just you pointed out some examples there. Let me, let me um, point out one more, another yeah. cheap, another inexpensive way of. So um, you can see the underside. Um, we call it the fascia boarding, where uh, you know where it looks. There's like a wood color look, um, a bottom right hand corner, Richard. Okay, and so I was trying to like use some kind of oil to bring that out, but I couldn't. So we just you know painted it. Why don't you go through the pictures and I'll bring. Okay. So you tried to get the wood grain emphasized or yeah. something, but and, then... and we couldn't. Instead of kind of trying to repair the areas that we couldn't um, to stay on, but oh, there you go. Look at the difference of the tariff. The, oh, the that's tiling cool. There. Oh, that's so yeah. cool. But really, right. I never would have thought of that either, because yeah. I just oh well, Spanish tile it's always going to be right. red. Actually, huh. so that that's these are the notes from the interior designer. That's not my building on the right. She's trying no, to explain. No, that doesn't me. look like it, but I could right. see the difference. Yeah, in yeah. It. Right. Wow. So another kind. Of, oh, stay right there for a second too. Um, why I liked working with her, she didn't just pick the colors. As you can see. She said, here are the SKU numbers, SW6121, SW6124. And I just took this email and I sent it to the contractor. So Once, no once you um, paint this now, if you need to touch it up, you just can order the same paint? Yeah, it's right there. You can order the same paint. What I like to do is keep um, leftover paint in, mm -hmm. you know, in storage so we're ready to go so we always have it. So we can always do minor touch-ups. But yeah. You keep this on file, it's great. I mean, back in the day, you probably have to, you know, look through your office looking. Remember, we used to look for the paint color or a paint sample and a paint card, but now that's it. I mean, we have it on file. It's a PDF. It's on your computer, and you're going to keep uh, extra paint on site as well. Very good. This is cool. So, so, that, so ask your designer to do that, and then yes, let's see. There's this clubhouse that it's kind of interesting. What do you use the clubhouse for? Well, this was this is a, a community center, and you want to you want to work with all the the amenities that you can, because that's what the, at the end of the day people want to know what do you have to offer at this apartment complex and amenities, some others amenities. So this is an amenity. It's kind of like a community center. In the front there, um, we have barbecues in the area, and there's tables where it's kind of like a picnic center, and I believe there's a TV out there as well. So. Kind of like where people go at the end of the day. Maybe you know, kind of maybe they sit there and have a beer or a cigarette or whatever they do, or, or they're going to eat dinner. But it, it, it's nice, you know. You really you almost feel like you're at a restaurant. And then behind, behind that gazebo, is the washer and dryer, the utility room. So you know, again, so if people are doing their laundry, if they want to stay close to their laundry, they can just go sit outside underneath that gazebo there. And we painted that too, I believe. If you want to go through the. I, uh... Oh, and by the way, um, the, yeah, I mean, those were her notes on the on the lights. On what, well, let's you know, look at the lights. Okay, yeah, it's great. I mean, it, it it's really nice getting someone's opinion about this because so many people will just walk into Home Depot, or if you leave it up to your contractor, which I recommend you don't, don't leave it up to your contractor to make those kind of decisions. Bang, it's done. You decide which light you want, and you're not going to get what's on sale or what's left over at Home Depot. They're all very close in pricing. So spend an extra dollar or two or three dollars a single unit and make your place really pop and look beautiful. So, what so do these, these cost, these kind of lights? I mean, they used to be really expensive, but now, I mean, no, oh, you know what? You can, you can buy them by the dozen, but anywhere from, from $10 to $20 a piece. That's it. Yeah. It makes such That's a it. difference. Absolutely. And I guarantee you, the person that you're buying the building from didn't stop to think to make these small, minute changes on the building, and they could have made hundreds of thousands of dollars more when they were selling. Now, do, you, again, we're looking, oh, wow. do you have yeah, your, we're looking, um, 
do you have your designer give you SKUs for these two? Um, she did. She sent them over as well. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. These are just the notes. Just they're just very de they're detailed notes. So, uh, and they're and notes. Mm -hmm. If I might add, they're they're notes for the contractor. Hmm. So I mean, look, and and she just. Okay, so that that's the um, okay, great, you know, excellent. Five hundred dollars, well spent, right? You're about to spend tens of thousands of dollars fixing the place. Hire a professional for five hundred dollars. Take the thinking out of it, and that's going to be part of your plan, and it's going to also help you create your budget. Fantastic. All right, um, five or ten units at a time. You're starting with the easy turns first, worst for last. I know you said you had some units that were like really, really bad, like they were damaged. Yeah, so um, look, I, I'm in the cash flow business, and I want to get up or, up and running as fast as possible. So if let's just say we're only doing ten units, I'm definitely going to save the worst for last. I want to get people in there. I want to get the buzz going. I want people. I want the the reputation to spread that there's new owners in town. Great things are happening to the property. Things are getting fixed. New colors, new paints, new flooring, and we'll just save that. You know, the the big job for the end. Because too many times I've seen novice people, newbies, get involved, and for some reason they want to tackle the big problems first and get them out of the way. I think that's a big mistake. Um, because all you the may time, never even have to do those units. You might be able to sell the building without doing them, which would be nice. That's a that's great point. So this is a 59-unit building. It's really a 60-unit building. Um, I don't ah. think I'm gonna. I don't think I'm gonna do the job on that last unit because it's a big <laughs> job, so, and, and right. So it was left that way. I thought maybe I would do it, but quite frankly, it's, <laughs> Why bother? it's a big job. Yeah, it's risky too. It's risky and takes time. It is. You know, it is. Let the other person listen. Everyone likes a deal. So when you're when when I'm selling this apartment complex, let the other person think that they're gonna raise revenues if they want to fix it. I don't, yeah, it's really I, a great done. point. <laughs> it's better yeah. for them to do something. They could feel like they're... <laughs> yeah. Um, and then uh, order, fix the roof, electrical and plumbing. Right. And then sheetrock, floating, texture and paint. What do you mean by... What would we say by floating? Okay. So now we're talking about the order of the rehab. And what, it, it, in, in, in what order do we fix things? Um, okay, it's common sense. It's, it's common sense. Step into my common sense corner. Um, start with the roof. Um, if, if it's leaking, fix it because the water's going to seep in and run down your walls that you just painted if you don't fix it. <laughs> right. Right? right. So start with the roof. We like to walk the roof, um, either contract out or again do it in house. Now, when I buy deals like this one, um, I don't get in there and put brand new roofs on. Um, we really just we patch. We just patch. I mean, it could be done. And when I say just patch, um, guys get up there with with like hot tar and some patches, and they patch, and it works well for me, and it's inexpensive. I mean, we get job, we get things done for less than a hundred dollars a patch. So you're you're, um, um, you're not are those hot mop ro uh, roofs or what? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it depends. Some of them roll it down, and they get up there with a torch, and they kind of hmm. melt the tar. Other times we just hot mop. Um, there's also something called a, a, we use a vinyl on our on our this particular deal. One of the reasons why I like this deal there, there's a, a vinyl cover on the roof, and um, it's a TPO, which is it's this it's like a Duralast roof, and it's white, and it reflects the light back into the sun. So. The units stay warm. People love it. It keeps the electricity bills down. Mm -hmm. So when you see that kind of white roofing, I recommend take a really good look at that building. Um, if you can afford it, um, it's a, if it's distressed property and it's there, your tenants will thank you for it. They'll know because they're going to save money in their electricity bills. So fix your roof. Um, don't, don't get a new roof. Up. Just fix don't it. Don't get a new roof. Just fix your roof. Electrical and plumbing. Well. Um, listen, are you gonna? I don't cut back on my electrical, and my on my plumbing. But right, let's start with the electrical part. Um, I've just found through experience, hire a reputable company in town. This way, when when you bring them onto the property, um, they do their work. 
the city knows they have an ongoing working relationship with the city. The city is going to have confidence and faith that they're doing it correctly. And um, mm -hmm. there's no way around it. Sometimes yeah. on jobs, that's the most expensive part of the rehab. For you can, in other words, don't hire the guy working out of his van who doesn't have a license don't. or whatever. I've done it. I tried it and right. it, it never worked out. So just figure out how much that's going to cost before you buy the building. Those guys will love to go get over to your building. They'll give you an estimate. They'll stand by their estimate. So don't cut back on your electrical contractors. Plumbing? Eh, plumbing. Okay, big jobs. You might want to bring in an outside firm, but uh -huh. small jobs you can do them in house. Um, here's a little secret, and we're only going to talk about it for 20 seconds here. Um, when we do big jobs, we bring in our own diggers. We have our own maintenance guys dig because why spend thirty, forty, fifty dollars an hour to have a licensed plumber on site? Very, very home? good. Wow. Right. Wow. We save a four, we, We'll save at least fifty percent of the cost. That's a uh, manual labor right there that you don't need to pay some really high price guy to do. Right. Yeah. So hmm. yeah. So so this way, and and not only that, the um, the plumber, uh, the master plumber, will tell the diggers what he wants. Yeah, you know, well, you know, they'll say, you know, dig from a point A to point B, and mm -hmm. I'll be back in two days. Okay, that's so wonderful. that's uh, let yeah, electrical and plumbing. Um, okay, so now you fix you 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 know you fix the pipes, you fix the electrical. Um, maybe you got some um, holes in the sheetrock now. Um, it's time, it's time to get the sheetrock up, and um, we like to do that in house with our maintenance people. It's it's very affordable. Yeah, uh, and a lot of people on this call are saying yeah. they don't have maintenance people, but that's cool. Okay. So what do you do as the option? So you know they're not in that situation. So what would they do instead to save money? Okay, um, what I did here at Casa Veneta, so I have all this experience. I still hire. I hired. I hired a contracting firm. I just didn't want to mess around with it. It was too small. I hired a contracting firm, and, and we and we just they gave me their quote, and I liked it. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, so you could you can hire a general contractor, or you you're gonna have to hire one or two maintenance people for your property anyway, and you can you can work with them and they'll tell you who else you need to bring in. Um, so okay. I like to get, it, and then another way of doing it is maybe you have some experience in single family houses, and you have uh, a crew that you've used before to fix houses. I bring them over for the minor things, not the big things, but the minor things, because again, you're just talking about. Sheet rocking is not a big job. If they know how to paint, they know how to float in texture. And when I mean when I say that, they put the sheet rock up, they take that mud, and you know, they just they spread the mud around. You know, they make it nice and even, and they let it dry. Yeah. And they they spray texture and paint. Right. Okay. So um, sheet rock, floating texture, paint. Um, if you don't want to do it yourself, just hire a general contractor. If you want to do it yourself, you'll probably save around 30 to 40 percent. And by doing it yourself, you mean have the labor do it, not sitting yes. there on your weekends. You. Yeah. No, no, definitely don't do it yourself. I would. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so we painted the place, um, countertops and flooring. Um, another, uh, some advice for everybody. Sometimes you might fall behind schedule when it comes to painting. So you're thinking, well, I got people that could do countertops um, and the flooring, they're ready to go. I don't want to lose them. I don't want them to move on to another job. Wait. Wait until the sheetrock, floating, texture, painting is done and dry. Because, I mean, why would you want to put down a new floor and paint a ceiling? It doesn't make sense. Some people will think, well, I'll cover it up really good. or Don't get talked into it. Just mm -hmm. paint the place, let it dry. And I say let it dry because if the paint's wet and you're putting down new flooring or you're fixing countertops, I guarantee you those contractors are going to back into the paint and ruin the job. Right. Yeah. Okay. That happen. So I, I, I hope I didn't scare anybody with, the, with that process, but that is the process. It's, it's easy. Like, That's easy. It, it, it is. It's really it's, easy. It's so easy. And, and once you can wrap your hands around this, I mean, this is where we really make the money. I mean, this well, is Well, another where, way to look at it is yeah. this. If you put in, let's say, $1,700 a unit here. So, you know, 50, you know, you said, um, 50, we said uh, 59 times 7,900 uh, uh, times 1,700. 1,700, right. 100,000. Okay. So you're going to get a half a million dollars in increased value if you can raise the rents just $100 a month just from that. 
which you might probably could if the area sustains it, which I know it does. So can you, are you, where else can you put in a dollar and get five dollars? Unbelievable. And you know what? That's, that's an, um, an income analysis that you just said, which is very important when we talk about apartment buildings. But another way they're valued is, is just what they're, what are the, what's the comps? What are they going for on the block? So true. We just, this is a real scenario. So on an income analysis, we probably bought something for just say we paid 950, we put a hundred thousand into it. So we're in it for a million fifty. Um, based off of an income analysis is probably going to be worth one five, but based off of the supply and demand and the comps and what things are selling for in the neighborhood, I think it's going to be worth one seven or one eight. Yeah, no doubt. So. And plus, if you're holding on to this and building your empire, you're going to have a better tenant at this point. You're upgrading your tenants this way. So you're going to have a much easier management proposition when you, when you do this. Absolutely. So again, if you're in it for the cash flow, fantastic. I am all about cash flow. If you want to make a pop, pay off your credit cards and maybe build a bank account, um, you could be in and out of this deal within six months. Okay. So let's talk about just some other just little issues here as we get closer to wrapping up. Um, uh, create a budget, sources and uses of funds to do the rehab. So who creates that budget? Because I know a lot of people don't know how to do that. And that's that's fine. I, I don't know how to do that. I, I'll tell you what. I would ask the real estate broker for a little help here. Um, they're going to give you um, they're going to give you the financials on the building. Um, and in doing so, you're going to see where money was spent. Um, that will help you create a budget. If they just spent, say, $20,000 on new plumbing, most likely you're not going to have to go in there and fix the plumbing. So when it comes to creating a budget, I would ask the broker of the deal to mm -hmm. recommend a general contractor. Mm -hmm. And I would get one, two, or three different general contractors on the property, and they'll okay. give you an estimate. And in doing so, they're creating your budget for you. Okay. If you have some experience, and you can bring some of your own people on there, um, you mean you're really just sourcing out what are things going to cost. Give me your estimate. Stand by your mm -hmm. your invoice that you're going to send me in 30 or 60 and 90 days. So mm -hmm. you're creating your budget that way. And we've talked before in our due diligence is where we actually got the things like yes. a boiler or some expensive plumbing things that we already have a few estimates. Right. So. Again, it's just a 39-unit building. It's not a very large number. This is, this is an easy apartment complex to get involved in. And um, we're really going to focus on what we see with our eyes. Um, what's it going to cost to paint the building? So you might want to get a, a paint company over there. Um, what's it going to cost to fix the roof? You might want to get a roofing company over there. And you're in the due diligence period. So when you say you want to buy this apartment complex, you get a good 21 to 30 days to get all these professionals over there to give you an, an estimate. I mean, this is what a builder does, or this is what anybody would do to put a, a budget together. Okay. All right. Now, uh, secure storage. That's the thing a lot of people fall down on. They get things ripped off. Yeah, and it happens to the best of us. So, look, you're, you're in your rehab, and you're going to be buying materials. Um, you might not think that nobody wants to steal 20 sheets of sheetrock from you. Because <laughs> you might think, oh my God, they got pulled by I mean, they got to carry it out. They got to put it in a truck. So they mean the middle of broad daylight. Um, this stuff occasionally happens. Um, I want to make sure you can lock it up. I want you to find a secure, if you need to bring a container on site, you can rent them inexpensively for anywhere from a few hundred dollars to probably 500 or 700. Lock up your stuff. What we like to do is we like to take a unit and we'll board up the unit and we'll really secure it. We'll make sure okay. there's new locks on there and we'll work out of a unit. And that will be the last unit that we rehab and we lock it up. Sometimes we have um, power washers on site. Sometimes we have sewer machines on site. Mm -hmm. Sometimes all the new light fixtures are just delivered. Lock it all up. Okay. And so you're doing it cheaply because you're not renting a big, uh, you know, what are those secured things called? Um, no. No. I mean, for, 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 Casadini, for, for Casadini, we just use the unit. Okay. So. Now, one thing. Um, yeah. For, yeah. Know. Okay. Go okay. ahead. Go ahead. 
No, I, I was going to say, and you probably also have a, a dumpster. You might need a big dumpster, uh, and they haul it away for you, including in the fee, right? Yeah, no, that, that's actually – that's great that you said that um, because a lot of people don't put that in their budget, and, and you should. The dump um, fees are expensive. I mean, they're expensive. Yeah, so listen, you can get the dumpster for um, – like you can rent a dumpster for like $200 a month, but um, it's going to cost another two or $300 a month to pick it up, take it away, and dump it. So um, it's going to cost probably four or $500 for one of those – what do they call them? Like, like a, a truck bed, those large – Right. I don't know, 40 or 60 footers. Um, so when you're getting prices from your contractors, you want to make sure they take their own garbage away. Right. The uh, yeah. cleanup and clean up and, yes. and the dump fees has got to be included. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So right. that's it. So secure, you know, and make sure, be careful who you give that key to. All right. <laughs> Don't give it out to a bunch of people. Yeah. All right. So. Um, There's also a lot of little tricks. I mean, do you have people picking up stuff at HD Supply? Do you have them? How do you know they're not picking up extra stuff for other jobs? You know, like that type of thing. Because that happens all the time with my contractors in the past. So HD Supply is kind of like, for everybody, the Home Depot for the apartment or, or commercial real estate business. Um, they have very good pricing, very competitive pricing. What I like best is they'll deliver everything to you. So you don't have to send your people going back and forth and okay. all that. All right. They'll send it out there um, to you. Um, um, wait, I'm sorry. So what did you ask me about AC Supply? Well, well you know, whatever. it's like about one of the things that where I've seen people lose money is having their con the subcontractors get stuff that they charge to the, you know, to you. That's not for your right. jobs. Very true. So. Um, when we when we invoice or when we order something from HD Supply, we make it very clear on on what property it's going to, and we can even put a unit number on it. So if you're ordering ten light fixtures, um, you can actually have it on the invoice light fixtures maybe for one through you know units one through ten. Oh. We try to label as much as we possibly can so we don't get ripped off. Um, listen, I'm, I'm hoping you're not dealing with somebody that's not honest um, and wants to create a long-lasting working relationship with you, but you know, there are bad people. So just be on, be on the lookout. You know? Be very conservative. Don't be too trusting. And make sure everything is labeled as much as possible. If you're going to paint 10 units, you're going to learn real quick how many five-gallon drums you need. So let's just say you need three five-gallon drums. And if you don't know this up front, that's okay. You're going to learn it really quick. Um, so if you need three five-gallon drums and you're going to order uh, for 10 units, so you got 30 five-gallon drums. By the way, the paint company will deliver that to your work site so you don't have to spend any time on that, picking it up. Um, so if you're ordering 30 drums and you get a bill for 40 drums, I mean, you got to go talk to the contractor. Where's the other? Where'd the other ten drums go? Mm -hmm. So you know, it's you, it, that's a really that doesn't happen a lot, but um, you know, if, so that's why I like to do it ten at a time, or you know, or just stay on top of it and make sure they're not walking out with it. Mm -hmm. So um, again, we just label as much as possible. Okay, great. That's a really good tip. And then you're having them deliver, so you're not having guys pick stuff up and having the account that whole bit. Yeah, because we yeah, you know, we, we pay we we pay some of our maintenance guys for their mileage and I'd rather not. I'd rather the paint company that's selling me the paint mm -hmm. pay for it. Mm -hmm. And time's money, right? Yeah, I'd rather them stay there or do something else. Right. There's always there's always something to throw away on one of these work sites. Right. Okay. Now financing, um, we might uh, I might suggest since we're actually about out of time. Do you want to take up on this next time and then? Move yeah, on? why don't we do that? Because yeah. um, I, I don't no, want to dump too much. There's a little details here that aren't, we don't want to miss because this is really important. I'll make a little note here that this is where we're at. But so listen, we I think what we just talked about here, <clears throat> we talked about <clears throat> excuse me some of the challenges that people face um, when they get involved, and I'm here to tell you that. Um, it's it's really easy. It, it's almost like 
it's almost like moving into your own house and painting your own walls. Like if you can get through this, which you will, um, this is the, this is the big difference. This is where you can make a lot of money. I mean, a lot of money, um, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. Uh, I mean, yep. whoever thought people were going to start paying five dollars for a cup of coffee at Starbucks? Right. Or um, well, this is know, arithmetic. So. It's simple arithmetic. If you can raise the rent say a hundred dollars a month. Exactly. On this property we looked at, exactly. it could mean $500,000 in your pocket or more. That's a 10 cap is a really high cap. It would actually be a lot more with most of the cap rates we're talking about, which would be more like six or seven these days. We're getting ready to take down a deal where we're going to raise the, the, the rents $200 a unit yeah. in a 160-unit building. And sure. It's wow. unbelievable. Millions wow. of dollars. Yeah, but, but you see properties. Here's an example. I saw a property that had uh, – every the. The uh, landlord is paying all the utilities. It was $100,000 a year the landlord is, uh, is paying. for this. Okay. So you, how would you raise the rents to turn that around? Well, um, we'd start rubbing it back. we call it rubs. We, we'd, we'd tell the tenants, the new tenants that are coming in, look, um, you know, you're going to pay 25 to $35 um, a person for water, and, or you're going to start paying for your own electricity. Or I'm going to charge you $150 a month flat rate for electricity. Mm -hmm. We just turned around. <clears throat> we just turned around and started charging everybody water on all of our properties. I mean, that, that's like um, yeah, an extra solved. thirty thousand. I mean, yeah, and you can because you know what? Everybody else is. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's just this is the cost of living. It's like, I'm not. I, I wish I didn't have to impose this on my tenants. Right. But I'm not the one that just jacked up water rates 30%. It's the same. Well, I mean, this is not a big building. It was 100000 is because it also includes sewer probably, I would imagine. But, you know, it's a lot. You know what? Um, and maybe this should be for another. Uh, a lot of these properties have leaks. And um, mm. we have we found really great ways of, of fixing these leaks. And um, I'll share with everybody next week. I mean, if you can cut your water, your hundred, if you can cut your water bill in half, and then you, you use this multiple of 10 that we're talking about, you've just created another few hundred thousand dollars in value for yourself just by fixing a leak. Well, we'll talk about leaks next time. Excellent. Yes. Hey, I know you're okay. really busy. You've got your $10 million empire to run. You are so <laughs> generous with your time and your help. I cannot believe it, Alan. Really. Awesome. So uh, I can't wait to read more letters about people that are buying apartment complexes and changing their lives. So it's me too. I'll, we'll tell you about those experiences in the share next time. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time. Okay. Everyone. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.